Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to another Iceborne video. Today I'm bringing you guys a build video, but it's something a little bit different. Today I have a set, what I consider to be the best set, for each one of the Rajang weapons. That's right, a build for each one of the 14 different weapon types. Some of them are pretty similar, but I just wanted to put this out there because I usually get a lot of questions like, is this new thing better than this now, or do you have a build for this new weapon, etc. So at the same time, I'm going to be comparing the Django weapons and their sets to the current meta sets in Iceborne for each weapon. But before before we get into that, I do want to talk to you guys about something a little bit. For those of you who don't know, I am a full-time student in college, I do this YouTube thing on the side, and the most time-consuming part of doing this isn't even recording and the editing and the uploading. It's grinding for everything in the game and figuring out the stuff that I want to put out for builds. So it eats up a lot of my time, and that's why this video has taken me so long to put out. So having a sponsor really does help me out in allowing me to sustainably keep making content for you guys. So before I get into the sets, I just quickly want to tell you guys about Raid Shadow Legends. This game has been out for only six months and it already has 10 million downloads. Like Jesus, bro. And out of all these downloads, there are nearly 340,000 reviews, 300,000 of which are perfect ones. And the best part is that it's absolutely free, just like the best things in life. And I'm sure you guys have heard about this game already, but it's basically like an action-focused dungeon-venturing style RPG. It has a great storyline and pretty impressive graphics for a freaking mobile game. So if you just like cool-looking combat, there's a lot of it in this game for you, and if you like story, there's a lot of it in this game for you too. There's pretty much something for everyone. My favorite thing are the champions and how you can customize them with different artifacts, which are basically different weapons and armor that give them powerful stats and passives. That's... That's the main reason I like them, of course. And the fact that battles are really fast-paced, and you have the option to either control your characters like a classic turn-based RPG, or just let it on auto mode. So for example, there are some times where you want to use your champion's abilities in a certain way, or focus down a specific enemy first, like a healer or something like that. And each level has a rating system going from one star to three star, and you'll have to tackle on specific challenges that can sometimes be pretty hard. So you have to use your brain cells for those moments, but sometimes you'll just have a bunch of cool new gear or you're farming a boss. You can just leave it on auto mode and put it at two times speed and the game just plays itself and you can come back and check in on it and just be AFK but playing at the same time. Basically gaming when you're not even gaming, or gaming while you're gaming on something else, which is just peak gamer. Anyway, like I said, the game is huge, so it's constantly getting new updates like the new Faction Wars, and there's also a new login reward program for new players, which is amazing. You basically get a bunch of really good stuff just for logging in, so it's worth coming back every day. There's also PvP, so if you want to get clapped by me, you can find me using my in-game ID, Hentai Cowboy, and you can join my clan and become my clapping partner instead. So guys, click the special link at the top of the description and you'll immediately start the game with 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to help you get started. Good luck, and I hope to see you there, and thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Alright, now let's get into the sets. Like I said, I'll be doing one for each weapon, so if you only care about one specifically, I'll leave some timestamps in the video description for you to click. But let's start off with Greatsword. The Django Greatsword, like all of his melee weapons, needs Handicraft to get to white, but with the Handicraft Charm 4, it's more than enough white to maintain with Master's Touch. For this, we're going to be using the Teostra Helmet, Gloves, and Coil to achieve Master's Touch, as well as the Damascus Chest Piece for the two levels of focus that we need on Greatsword, and finally, the Garuga Boots Beta. The thing about Django weapons is that with an Affinity Augment, Crit I-7, and Attack Boost 4, they only get to 40% Affinity because of the negative Affinity that they have on them. So in order to get to 100% Affinity in an actual fight, you need to have level 5 Agitator for that extra 10% Affinity that the level 5 gives you, which you do get from this set. But... Is it the best greatsword in the game? Fortunately, no. It gets unsurprisingly beaten out by the Acidic Glavinous Greatsword, because despite it having 100 less raw and only Agitator 4, it can be modded for 6 attack increase custom upgrades, it can reach purple sharpness, and it can make use of non-elemental boost. And because it's elementless, it means it's more effective versus every monster. The Django Stick is Thunder, so you'll actually see less damage versus a lot of monsters, which is unfortunate, because it does look really cool. Moving on, we have Longsword. For this one, we're going to be using the same set, but we've swapped out the chest piece for the Brute Tigrix chest since we don't need focus. And now it's become a standard raw Master's Touch set. Like I said, we only need Handicraft 4, but we do need Agitator 5. But since we don't need focus on Longsword, we can max out attack boost in this set as well. Now, is this better than any of the meta Longswords, aka Goldrathian, Zora, or Shara? 
I'm actually glad to say that it can compete. It actually does the same damage on a per hit basis as a Shara, but of course Shara does rely on that little bit of purple sharpness. Whenever that drops, Django does way more damage. And now when you compare it to Gold Rathian, Gold does almost as much damage, but it relies on peak. And if that drops, equals Pupu -pu Kaka. However, the strength of gold is of course those poison procs. And the same thing with Zora. Zora hits for less, but it does have a bunch of really nice burst of blast procs that make hunts end real quick. But unfortunately, it has such little purple, and once that drops, it suffers quite significantly. So the good news is that if the monster is weak to thunder, the Rajang Longsword can actually hang in with the rest of them, and it's actually pretty efficient and pretty consistent, which is amazing news because I absolutely love the way this thing looks. So it gets a thumb of approval from me. That's right, I'm fingering it. Next up is Sword and Shield. Can I just say this thing looks absolutely retarded? It is literally a friggin' caveman club, which is perfect because the playstyle you'll need for it is the shield slam spam. This set is identical to the longsword one, but how does it fare against the rest of the sword and shields in Iceborne? To be honest, I don't know, it's really difficult to give you an exact gauge on what is best for Sword and Shield. There are a lot of really good Sword and Shields, and Sword and Shield is a weapon you can build in a variety of ways. You can build it for Raw, you can build it for Element, you can build it for Crit Element, you can build it for Support, so there are a lot of options. But if you compare it to other Sword and Shields specifically tailored for Raw, like Shara or Nergi and Gold Rathian. It's in a similar spot to Longsword, where Gold Rathian is probably better just because of the poison procs, but at the same time, Rajang can still hang. So if you like the look of it somehow, go for it. I don't think this will be better than a Thunder Crit Element set with a different Sword and Shield, but if you're building something for Raw and it's weak to Thunder, this could be pretty nice. Moving on, we have Dual Blades. For this, we're going to be using an entirely different set. We're going to be using four pieces of Silver Rathalos for True Crit Element and the Garuga Boots Beta, and the Shock Charm 5 to round out the set. This will give you level 7 Crit Eye, and maxed out Thunder Attack, Attack Boost 4, Crit Boost 3, Weakness Exploit 3, and to put our sharpness at white and keep it there, we have one level of Handicraft and Protective Polish. This is actually the highest damage you can get out of a Dual Blade set for the Rajang Dual Blades, despite it having such low ass thunder element but is it the best no no way it gets out damaged by karen quite significantly and karen doesn't even need protective polish nor handicraft so if you wanted to you could even run razor sharp they're still pretty decent of course and they look kind of cool so go for it if you want but i don't think i would ever use these over karen next up we have hammer for this we're going to be using the same set that we were using for our long sword and sword and shield which is a master's touch set with four handicraft and max agitator now this one hurts me boys because this hammer looks friggin sick when you power charge it the fur on the actual hammerhead glows blonde with electricity just like rajang it's amazing however it does not do more damage than a Cynic Glavinous Hammer. It's a pretty similar story to Rajang versus a Cynic Glavinous Greatsword, because the tiny amount of purple acid glav can actually last a pretty significant amount of time, if not an entire hunt, because you hit so very often with both of these weapons. However, this thing looks so sick, I still use it whenever I'm gonna fight a Gold Wrath or a Tigrix or something, because I don't care, it looks amazing. So if you don't care about having like a bit more damage and just wanna look like you have Goku in your hands, absolutely use this thing. Moving on, we have our second blunt bro, the Dute Lord, Hunting Horn. I know you guys have been asking me for a Hunting Horn set video for ages, and I promise you it's coming, but just appease yourself with this for now, okay? This set is pretty much identical to the Hammer one, except they sacrifice two levels of attack boost for two levels of Horn Maestro. Whether that's worth it or not, it's completely up to you. I personally play up my songs at the beginning of a hunt, and then I just mindlessly bash the highest damage combo regardless of what song it plays, and then whenever my melodies are over, I play them again to refresh them. <laughs> I don't play Hunting Horn very well, but th that's what works for me. So if you're constantly queuing up songs, then Horn Maestro is probably a waste. You'll probably get a lot more benefit from having more attacks, so you do more damage. Or you could spec for any other defensive or support skills that you want, like two levels of wide range, etc. But is this the best horn? Not exactly, but it's pretty good, especially for something like Kushala, since it has all wind pressure negated and it deals thunder damage. So it's probably better than the Shara Horn for that in any similar fight, and honestly, it looks so freaking sick. I would just use it just for that. I just love the way it looks, so I definitely recommend it, and it's not too bad. So this is definitely 
kind of replaces the Shara, so I definitely recommend it. Next up, we have the first of the other two pairs in this game, Lance. For this, we're once again going to be using the Master's Touch set, but I sacrificed three levels of attack boost for three levels of guard. If you want, you could just opt for one level of guard and keep attack boost six or whatever other quality of life skill you want. Just make sure you get attack boost for at least so you get that 5% affinity that we need to counter this Lance's negative affinity. And I really like the way this thing looks, but is it the best Lance? It's once again a similar situation to Longsword. I hate protective polish on Lance, and this is basically just a better version of the Brute Tigrix Lance. It has more raw, less negative affinity, and a level 4 slot. But there are other options that are fairly consistent, like Nergi and Namiel, but again, Jang can definitely hang. But only versus things that are weak to Thunder, and that's where Shara has the advantage, because you can use that pretty much everywhere, and with the new augment slots, you can have it at 55% affinity. So for me personally, I would just use Shara instead, but if you like this, you'll still be doing pretty well for yourself anyway, so feel free to go ahead. Moving on to its edgy Tord cousin, the Gunlance. I honestly had a really hard time figuring out a set for this because it ultimately comes down to playstyle. That a Zhang Gunlance has wide 6 shelling, which is its own niche in and of itself. So you can build it for pure shelling, you can focus on the worm state crap, or you could just go for the legacy melee only combo. But the way I found most effective to play white six is to poke shell, poke shell, poke reload. And with that in mind, I'm using three pieces of Zora for the artillery secret set bonus. Artillery is the only skill that increases your shelling damage. Raw does absolutely nothing for shelling at all. So as long as you can fit in Artillery 5, you're pretty much set. Other than that, I put in one level of Handicraft to get to white and I'm using Protective Polish to keep it there, since we're just gonna mindlessly blast at this thing and we're gonna be shelling a lot, so it's gonna cause a lot of sharpness problems. On top of that, since we're gonna be poking, I opted for Critical Eye over Attack Boost, even though it's only 35%, simply because that means that our pokes have a 1 in 3 chance to deal 25% more damage, and I personally consider that better than consistently dealing about 3 or 4% more damage per hit. You can opt for that if you want, but I think Expert plus 4 jewels are more common than Attack 4 jewels anyway, so this might be even more feasible for the general public, but it's up to you. Other than that, I also have Offensive Guard to boost our Rob a bit to make up for the lack of Attack boost, and I have 3 Guard as well as Guard up, so we can make sure we can block everything, and so that we're not recoiling as much after an attack and can actually make use of the bonus damage from Offensive Guard with a follow-up attack. But is this the best gun lance to use? No, but it's pretty close. The best one to use in Iceborne is still going to be the long level 6 with charged shelling, but this is still pretty close in terms of DPS. So if you like the Django Gun Lance, you can absolutely go for it. There are a lot of ways to build and play Gun Lance. This is only one of them. This is the way that I play it. So feel free to experiment and spec for what works for you. Next up, we have the first of the two Mighty Morphing weapon types, Switch Axe. For this one, we're going to be using the same Master's Touch set that we have been using before, but we're going to slot in one level of Power Prolonger. I really wish we could fit more of that in here, but we can't do that without sacrificing Agitator, which I kind of don't want to do. However, since you don't lose sharpness while you are zero sum discharging, you can forego this Master's Touch set entirely for this one. This one does more damage and lasts longer, like me. But of course, it does mean that whenever your mantles are on cooldown and you can't spam ZSD, you will be losing sharpness. But the Power Prolonger skills that you have on you will keep your amp sword mode up for longer at least, so you can kind of deal more damage that way. But is this better than the other endgame switch axes? Not a chance. Unfortunately, no. When you compare it to Gold Rathian, which doesn't need Handicraft nor Max Agitator for max damage, and add on the fact that it can comfortably slot in Power Prolonger, it doesn't have to sacrifice Master's Touch for it, plus it also has the added benefit of Poison procs, I'd say it's still the best switch axe in the game, but this one still deals a decent amount of damage. I'm not a huge fan of how this looks compared to some of the other Zhang weapons look, but it's alright. So if you can get over the need for Master's Touch or the need for Power Prolonger, then go for it, but I don't really think that you should, there's no reason to to when there is just a much, much better weapon out there. Next up, we have the weapon I have no experience with, Charge Blade. This Charge Blade has god-awful combat stats, so I built it around classic impact file SAED spamming. For this, I'm obviously going to be using three pieces of Zora for Artillery Secret. Now, I'm once again going to be using one level of Handicraft to sneak our way into white and Protective Polish to keep us there. We also have one level of Guard, maxed out Offensive Guard for those spicy Guard points, and maxed out Focus, which we do need for Charge Blade. And I also have maxed out Critical Eye on this, instead of maxed out Attack Boost. And the reason I did that is because having level 7 attack boost only gives you 3 extra damage per file. And even though this is an SAED spam build, putting 7 levels of a skill for 3 extra points in damage 
is not worth it. And we also have Max Agitator, which is going to give us the equivalent of a max attack boost anyway, but in combat it would also put us at 45% affinity, so essentially half of all of our attacks should and could be crits, and that is way more damage throughout a fight than 3 extra damage per impact file. Sadly, this cannot use non-elemental boost, so can it compete with Acidic Glavinous? You were correct. It's fact. It actually deals more file damage than the Glavinous, despite the Glavinous set having rank 5 attack boost. However, because this can't get to purple, it doesn't do as much damage on a per hit basis with your actual weapon, but it's still more DPS overall. However, I wouldn't use this versus monsters that are strong versus thunder for that same reason. Even though impact files don't care, most of your attacks, or at least half of them, will involve your actual weapon and you will be dealing significantly less damage. And I think those are the moments where Acidic Glavinous has the edge over this one. So if you're fighting any monster that has a weakness to thunder, definitely use this. This is the best set for you to use. But for everything else, I think you might just be better off using Acidic Glavinous. Oh, we're nearing the end here, thank god. The next one is Insect Glaive. If you guys haven't seen my video for the best Insect Glaive sets, then be sure to go and check it out. I'll leave a card in the top right hand side of the screen for you. But anyway, back to Django. For the Insect Glaive, I'm going to be using the Valor Wing 3 Metis Kinsect because it is a blunt Kinsect. This has max speed, which is what we want, as well as some decent healing, I guess and Blast Dust, but we're using this one because the Rajan Glaive has a Blunt Boost Kinsect bonus. So if you keep the Kinsect on the monster's face throughout the hunt, you might get at least one cheeky KO, sometimes even two, which is always very nice. As for the set, we're going to be using the same Master's Touch set that we've been using throughout the video, but because it's Insect Glaive, we are going to be using a Glider Mantle, and that's where I'm going to be putting our four levels of Agitator. So in our set, we only need to put one level to get Max Agitator whenever we put our Mantle on, and then we can just slot in some Peak as well. So. Is this Insect Glaive better than any of the other Insect Glaives? Yes, it is. It absolutely blows an ogre out of the water. It even does more damage than Shara against monsters that are weak to thunder, of course, don't forget that. And almost as much as Nergi, or even more than Nergi, if you decide to skip that extra level of Agitator for a level of Peak. So I would definitely recommend this IG to anyone that is looking for a better Thunder Insect Glaive, or if you were just unsure about building it or not, definitely go ahead and pick yourself one up. Moving on, we have the other wooden stick fiend, the bow. For this one, we're going to be using more or less the same set we were using for dual blades, four piece of silver rathalos for true crit element, and the garuga boots. With this set, you have max crit eye, thunder attack, agitator, crit boost, and weakness exploit, as well as some stamina skills and bow charge plus. So how does it fare against the kadachi bow? Not very well. It does not do as much damage as the Kadachi, even with Max Agitator proc when Kadachi doesn't even have Agitator on it, nor does it need it, thanks to his base affinity. So I wouldn't personally recommend this bow over the Kadachi. It looks like a Witch Broom anyway. It doesn't have any utility coatings. Kadachi has Paralysis Plus coatings too, which is just really good, so yeah, I would say skip on it. Not this time. Now let's move on to the final set of weapons the bow guns. First up is heavy. The ammo we're going to be focusing on this HPG is sticky because it has auto reload on sticky threes. And I quickly want to give a huge shout out to Angbara. He made a video explaining how sticky ammo has an actual damage cap and also how all of that works. So go and watch the video and check him out as well. He is an amazing bow gun player and he makes really good sets as well. So if you like my stuff, odds are you already know who he is or you're in for a treat. Anyway, in fine print, super summarized, sticky ammo damage will scale up with your raw to a certain point. Once you reach a certain amount, of raw, your stickies will be doing the maximum amount of damage they can do. No matter how much higher you get above that threshold, they won't be doing any more damage. This threshold can also be increased with attack augments, which is what I'm using here today. With that in mind, in order to get to the cap for this weapon, you're going to need to eat for attack large and feline bombardier, as well as have the effects of a mega demon drug, might seed, and demon powder. That, combined with attack boost 5, artillery 5, and max peak, will put you at the cap. In order to get artillery secret, we're going to be using three pieces of Zora for the set bonus, in this case being the alpha helm and chest and the beta boots. I also have a guard up jewel in here because why not, it's a great utility skill. And since there isn't much else for this bowgun in terms of other ammo, so I went with four shield mods. Though you could go for a reload if you want to make use of the para ammo as well. I also modded it with a power barrel for even more sticky stuns, which pairs nicely with max slugger that we get from the black diablos gloves and coil. I then also have ammo up three and spare shot from the charm. So is this the better sticky three HBG? Yes, a hundred percent. This also has para 1 and 2, like I mentioned, as well as auto reload on exhaust 2s, which is great. It's literally just a straight up upgrade to the Shara HBG for stickies, which was already hella strong, so this just made that setup a hell of a lot stronger. 
And finally, our last weapon for today, Light Bowgun. This is again another Sticky Focus set, so we need to find the damage cap for Stickies on this weapon, which if you mod it for 2 attack, you can get to with Max Agitator, Artillery 5, and Attack 4, assuming you have all the food skills as well. I'm again using the Zora pieces to get the Artillery Secret Bonus, and I'm also using two pieces of Ruin or Gigante gear for Attack Boost, Agitator, and Earplugs. Now, you're going to need to run two Recoil Suppressors on this, so you can use Stickies with high recoil instead of very high, as well as two Evade Reload mods. Now, because it's so easy to get to the sticky camp for this LBG, you honestly have a lot of slots you can outfit with whatever you want. I opted for Slugger 3 because it's absolutely ridiculous, you get so many KOs, but I was also able to fit an earplugs and special ammo boost, which is great on Light Bowgun. And as a cherry on top, we also get the Nergi set bonus, haste and recovery for a little bit of healing, but feel free to use whatever you want in those slots. Now, is this better than any of the other LBGs in the game? Yes, it's once again just a straight up upgrade to the Shara LBG, which was the LBG you would previously run for Sticky 3, which even though they do less damage than Rapid Fire Sticky 2s, they seem to KO more often. Just Capcom things, I guess, but you also have Auto Reload on Para 2 ammo and Exhaust 2 ammo, which is amazing, especially the Para 2 ammo on a light bowgun. And can I just say how much I friggin' love the way this thing looks? I personally have like a fetish for multi-barreled weapons, just something about how they look and how the theme of it and how they feel, it just tickles me in just the right way, okay? So I absolutely love this thing. And again, thanks and huge shout out to Angbara for that video he put out. A link to that video and his channel will be in the description. Please go check him out. So those are all the sets. Jesus Christ. To do a little summary, I'm going to put a little chart I made on screen where I marked which weapons are either the best new meta option for their class, or if they're just viable options, or if they are simply just not worth using in comparison to the other options for that weapon class. Well guys, that's it for me today. This video took a lot of time and effort and sweat and blood and tears and tears. Quite literally, I tore my Achilles tendon in the gym last week, so I am bedridden for the most part. So if you guys enjoyed this video, or found it useful or entertaining, then please drop a like as it really does help me out, and I deeply, deeply appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe for more Iceborne content, as well as some other games coming in soon, and I would like to thank my patrons for their continued support, and I would once again like to thank Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Remember guys, click my link at the top of the description for free 50,000 silver and an epic champion to get you started. And above all, I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.